So, last time we talked about dispersion in uh, multi-mode fibers where we said that uh, the different mode paths are different and so the delay is different, uh, time of arrival of each mode is different and so you have a dispersion. And there were two possible solutions for that, one possibility we discussed was that you could use a graded index fiber which could minimize the delay uh, and the principle is that the path that is taking longer, the longer path is allowed to propagate through a lower refractive index, shorter path will propagate through a higher refractive index. So, you are controlling the speeds thereby reducing the delay in the arrival time. If I put independent information on different modes, then how is it a problem? So, if I put independent information on different modes and if I have think of a situation where I have hundreds of modes and I have independent information on hundreds of modes, they will all mix together, they will arrive at different times, they will also have also mix together. So, you can say that my output information as a written as a column vector for the 100 modes is equal to input information again a column vector multiplied by if there are 100 modes it will be like 100 by 100 matrix. If I have the computational ability to calculate what is that mixing and delay, maybe it is possible. So, how do we do this uh, few moded communication? The number of modes that you can use is very restricted in a few moded communication simply because the complexity of processing becomes larger and larger. The delay first and, and not just that there is also this additional problem. Uh, when you say few moded, uh, your higher order mode it is not that it will take always that path. Remember when we cal when we did this delta tau calculation there are a couple of assumptions we are making. We are saying that the higher order mode will always propagate that way and the fundamental mode will always propagate this way, but the information in the fundamental if I have two different information in the fundamental and higher order mode what can also happen is that whenever there is a bend in the fiber one that was propagating along the fundamental mode may now go at an angle and so it gets transferred to a higher order mode another bend will bring it back to the fundamental mode. So, there could be transfer. So, as the information is propagating the information now resides in the fundamental mode then it can go into higher order mode and then back to fundamental mode and you have no knowledge of that. So, it becomes very difficult even if uh, you have you put different informations in different modes. Okay. So, graded index fiber was one solution the other solution was not to use multiple modes use only single mode right because even in a graded index fiber I said q is equal to 2 quadratic or parabolic profile is giving you minimum dispersion, but that is still not 0 dispersion there is some amount of dispersion. So, the way to solve or we do not typically use graded index fibers for long distance communication simply because that dispersion is still non 0. So, rather than that avoid that problem completely by propagating only one mode in the fiber and that is your single mode fiber. Now, the question we are asking ourselves is in a single mode fiber what is the cause of dispersion. Okay. So, uh, the chromatic dispersion in single mode fiber either is because of the material dispersion where you say that the refractive index is different for different wavelengths. Where are these different wavelengths coming from? the laser has a certain line width, it has a certain lambda spread. So, there are different wavelengths. There is one more reason why there, there are different wavelengths or different frequencies. Why do you have that? Even if my laser is of single frequency, when I transmit an information, I modulate and any modulation would mean that there is a shaping in your pulse and that pulse shape will give you a spread in the frequency domain. So, whatever comes out of the transmitter there are two spreads that we are talking about one because of the laser or the transmitter itself 
and the one due to modulation. Now depending on how fast you are doing mo modulation and what is the quality of the laser you are using, one could be more than the other. You would of course use the one that is larger number, so we will talk about it a little bit. And the other reason we said uh, yesterday was uh, waveguide dispersion, where waveguide dispersion comes in from the fact that uh, even for a single mode fiber, the mode profile is a function of wavelength. Uh, the b is a function, the v is a function of lambda, so your b is a function of lambda and so your uh, effective index or that becomes a function of lambda and so the profile itself becomes a function of lambda and that will give you a, a wavelength dependence, right. So this second uh, waveguide dispersion is even assuming, so material dispersion is because of the fact that your core index is n is a function of lambda. This one even if you assume that n, n 1 and n 2 are you know independent of lambda, but the waveguiding nature of uh, the system or the modes, but before we do that let us uh, look at a little bit more about uh, the frequency spread because we are modulating. Okay. So, let us start, we always started using a uh, monochromatic wave in our discussion, whenever we did for example, when we calculated the um, intermodal dispersion, we said the, we calculated the time taken for a mode to propagate a certain distance and we said that the time is related to the speed and that speed we actually took it as c by n. And that is under the assumption that I have a monochromatic wave in general, which is represented by let us say uh, some constant, uh, I, want, I do not want to use A because we will use A for something else. Let us say some uh, constant E power j omega t, right. And as this monochromatic wave propagates along a uh, certain direction, let us say z direction, it is going to evolve as omega t minus beta z. So, this is as a function of z as a function of t. Okay. This is some uh, constant which represents the strength of the wave and this beta is a function of omega and this is, how can I represent beta? omega by c times n which is a function of omega okay and that is how beta depends on omega depending on your of course there is a linear relation here beta is always a function of omega but uh, the point is whether n is a constant or n is a variable and n is a variable as a function of omega but you know this uh, this this is the definition of your ideal uh, monochromatic wave and this ideal monochromatic uh, wave uh, in the time domain, uh, so let us say the center frequency is omega naught of this uh, wave or the, there is only one frequency, right? it is an ideal monochromatic wave and that is omega naught. Now if you look at the uh, time domain, I mean uh, time domain uh, of this monochromatic wave, this wave is actually existing from minus infinity to infinity to make it ideal monochromatic wave, so that in the Fourier domain it is a delta function at plus omega naught and minus omega naught. But practically you are not using this, what do you use when you are trying to uh, transport, you are using bits or you have some shapes. Uh, Let us take the case of a simple on off keyed system. O O K, this is on off keyed system, it is not 0 0 K, okay. uh, this is on off keyed system. Um, so, these are your bit slots and in a non return to 0 configuration, ideally you would want to transport your bits like this 1s and zeros and so on, but when you do your modulation with uh, bandwidth limitation, the pulse that you actually transport might look like this. Okay. 
uh, because you cannot if you want to have very sharp ideally 90 degree turn here it means that I should have infinite bandwidth in my transmitter you do not really have that. So, typically you have a pulse shape when you are transmitting a one. Now, a pulse so you are now talking about a pulse rather than a monochromatic uh, ideal monochromatic wave. Now, a pulse shape let us say at z equal to 0 t just at the beginning of your propagation. Since you have a pulse shape we know from our Fourier ideas that this pulse can be now constituted by sinusoids harmonics. So, I can say that this pulse is actually summation of e power several j omega t's with a strength corresponding strength a omega and integrated over d omega that is what is giving rise to my pulse in the time domain where my a omega are the equivalent of uh, you know Fourier coefficients right. So, this a omega is I can calculate by doing 1 by 2 pi integrating psi z equal to 0 t e power minus j omega t d t. Okay. So, it means that a pulse in the time domain in the frequency domain it can be represented by a set of frequencies with corresponding strengths and ideally this limits of integration should run from minus infinity to infinity right. And each of these frequencies have to follow this propagation. So, at the beginning of the fiber whenever I say I have a pulse in the time domain in the frequency domain it is constituted by several frequencies and each of these frequencies have to uh, evolve as psi z t after a propagation distance they have to evolve as a omega e power j omega t minus beta z d omega. And the propagation phase that they are accumulating the propagation phase that they accumulate that beta is decided by the specific frequency. So, the difference between this equation and this equation is that this is for a given frequency this is for my pulse which I can rewrite and say that there can be a amplitude part and there can be a phase part e power j omega t minus beta z where I know that this beta is a function of omega. So, let us take a case of uh, Gaussian pulse in the time domain which means that I am approximating the shape in the time domain as a Gaussian. Uh, why Gaussian? Gaussian is a more popular uh, very popular approximation simply because the integrals the Fourier transforms etcetera are all very analytically uh, solvable. Okay. So, that is why it is Gaussian. Uh, so, in the time domain let us say my uh, input Gaussian pulse at z equal to 0 is a coefficient or a constant c the shape has to be Gaussian. So, I have e power minus t square by tau naught square is my shape of the Gaussian e power j omega naught t simply means that earlier I had a monochromatic wave of frequency omega naught which is extending from minus infinity to infinity, but now I am defining my pulse as something like this where this envelope of the pulse is this. Okay. The modulation still remains at omega naught. So, the carrier frequency still remains at omega naught. Now, if I have this I can substitute and find out what my Fourier components are. So, I can find out a of omega as c by 2 pi integral e power minus t square by tau naught square e power j omega naught t e power minus j omega t d t. And because it is a Gaussian function this integration is 
uh, analytically solvable and if you work out this answer will come out to be C t naught by 2 root pi e power minus t naught square by 4 omega minus omega naught the whole square. This is no surprise that it is looking like a Gaussian because in your fundamental signals course you have said the Fourier transform of a Gaussian is a Gaussian right. This is just that this way I am not deriving this it is not very complicated to do this. So, your observation is that the center frequency is omega naught, but around the omega naught you have a spread and the spread is given by this tau naught square by 4 or what exactly would be the spread? Your spread would be 1 by e spread if you were to calculate or 1 by e square spread if you were to calculate this would be here the spread was in the time domain the spread is uh, 2 tau naught. When I say spread it means full width at 1 by e maximum ok at 1 by e of the maximum that is 2 tau naught whereas here delta omega would be uh, what should this be instead of tau naught instead of 1 by tau naught square I got 4 by tau naught square or in, in the denominator I had tau naught square this is 4 by so this should be 2 by tau naught. 